In this video, we'll cover an important detail that was glossed over in the previous implementation video. Scripted REST API ACLs. We'll assume a basic knowledge of ACLs as they apply to records, fields, and so forth. If not, take a look at the System Fundamentals Training and Certified System Admin Certification. The same concepts apply to our REST API, only instead of records and fields, we'll apply them to the scripted REST API or resource. The ACL determines if the authenticated user has access to the scripted REST API or resource. The main difference is, where record ACLs define the table and fields as part of the ACL, scripted REST ACLs are defined once and used in a list field on each scripted REST API or resource. Let's take a look at how they work. For the REST API, the Security tab shows the default ACL field. When we created ours in the last video, it used this default value. In the resource, we can see the same one. Let's go take a look at it to see how it was built. We'll start by going to System Security Access Control. Next, we'll search for the Scripted REST External Default Rule. At a glance, we note a couple of things. First, the type is REST underscore endpoint. Most times, we would see record here. Second, we can see the ACL requires the role SNC underscore internal, and the script goes one step further and explicitly denies SNC external. That means, in order to access a scripted REST API or resource with this particular ACL, the authenticated user needs to satisfy both. The user needs the SNC internal rule and not external. If either of these is not true, they will be denied access. Further down, we see two related lists, the scripted REST APIs and scripted REST resources that use this ACL. If we want to create one of our own, this serves as a good template. Let's quickly walk through the process of creating an ACL. First, we need to have the security admin role to manage ACLs. If so, we'll click our profile icon and select Elevate Roles, then click the security admin checkbox and click OK. If you don't see this, Talk to your system admin to get the security admin role. While we could do the next few steps from the standard UI, let's go to Studio so we don't accidentally create an ACL in the wrong scope. We'll navigate to System Applications, Studio. Choose our application, or if this modal doesn't appear, use File Switch, then select our app. Next, we'll click here in the upper left to create a new application file. In the modal that appears, We'll select Access Control from the left, then Access Control from the middle, and then click Create. First things first, change the type to REST Endpoint. Next, we'll give it a name. Then, select the role required. Finally, we'll click Submit. Now let's go back to the scripted REST API and resource we defined in the previous video. We'll unlock the default ACLs field and remove the default one and add ours. We'll update the record and take a quick look at the resources ACLs. Notice that the resource still has the default external ACL applied. The resource ACL overrides the parent REST API ACL, so pay close attention. If we don't set a resource ACL, the system uses the ACL from the parent. So now we know how to really fine tune the access to our scripted REST API and resource. Take a look at the docs link in the description for more information.